is Evan Damerel from Locked On Cavs with some uh, potential Jared Allen trade scenarios because he wasn't a fan apparently of the they ones were crushing, we the day. Apparently on their podcast, they were crushing you, Mike. I know. They, I didn't involve any picks in my deals, and, and we'll see Evan in a second. He could explain his deals. They involve some picks, so it's not – not apples to apples, but uh, they weren't a fan of some of my trades. And Evan, let's see what you got then. By the way, has anybody figured out if we got the uh, the bone out of Donovan Mitchell's throat after choking in the playoffs? <laughs> Wait, yeah. is everybody is everybody saying that we should one thousand percent trade Jared Allen? Everybody's off to no, Jared Allen. No, I don't think so. You want to trade Jared Allen, Evan? You want to trade him? No. What could you really. get for him? See, that's a great question because we we talked about Mikey's trade quite a bit, and it, no disrespect to him, we we've made it clear we love him dearly. But if you are the Cavs, the value that you can probably get for a center that doesn't shoot three pointers right now isn't super high. And if you look at how this team is a defensive first team, Allen's a big part of that, and. The juice just may not be worth the squeeze right now because teams may not be high on Allen as a player and the Cavs just may not get a return that they're willing to uh, kind of bite the bullet on. I mean, unless they get like something dramatic, I, I threw a dramatic trade out there, of course, but I just don't see anything tangible really happening. And I, it just keeps echoing in the back of my head that Kobe Altman said nothing dramatic is going to change for this team uh, this offseason. There's probably going to be some moves on the margins and Allen being traded would definitely be a dramatic trade. I mean, if the Cavs don't make any significant moves, how do we expect them to be significantly better? Just because they're young and they'll grow? I don't know. I'm not feeling good about that. I don't know about you guys. Oh, no. I think that's delusion. <laughs> like, that, that Kobe Altman, when he says that, like, I, I don't understand oh, why. I, I don't get why people are not understanding the way these new dudes think these young athletes is thinking. They've given you the blueprint of how they're going to make this move. If Kawhi Leonard won a championship in Toronto and then left, what do you think Donovan Mitchell is going to do? Like, you have to actually get to the, to the conference finals and win it for him to say, okay, I might think about signing an extension here. But even with that, Kyrie Irving wanted to leave after they won a championship. That's not going down. I'm just, I don't know what, I don't know what Kobe's thinking about. Am I, am I crazy? He's naive. No, I don't think you're crazy necessarily. You do notice one thing when Kobe talks about their approach and just this rebuild in general is they look at guys who want to be in Cleveland long term since I love this city. I know you guys do too, but if you were a guy in your early to mid twenties and you had generational wealth on a dotted line and you could pick where you got to live with, it's like Miami, Los Angeles, even New York, if you wanted to. I think I'd lean towards that if I had the option. I think that's that's the beauty and the frustration when it comes with free agency. And you look at teams like Cleveland, they do go get Donovan Mitchell in that trade. And I agree with you, G. Bush. Like, you have to kind of maximize your opportunities here, not just to win now because you've made a win now, now move to get him, but you're also convincing him, hey, Donovan, you expected to be in New York. A lot of us expected you to be in New York. Why don't you just stick for, in Cleveland for the remainder of your career, even though Cleveland isn't home to you like New York is? Mayor Bill sticks in downtown. He's going to be more uh, appealing. Mm. You know? So we we brought Evan on, though, to discuss some Jared Allen trades. Yeah, let's get to these Jared Allen. And we Allen. have four of them. The first one, Evan, looks a very similar to one of the ones I presented. Whoa. That you apart. So <laughs> I'll let see. you go. This is the first Mavs trade. You can take it full, Steve. 196. It's a Mavs trade with Jared Allen, with the Cavs getting Tim Hardaway Jr., JaVale McGee. And a first round pick. Back. What was your trade that was equivalent to this? I, can't I just remember. didn't include a first round pick. I didn't do any picks in mine, so that was the one caveat. So Evans is more realistic in that sense. I, Evan, you want to explain take, why this I one take makes the sense? Deal. So for me, you're getting shooting at Tim Hardaway Jr., which is what you need the most if you're the Cavs, especially at the wing spot. Javiel McGee's a dude that has already played here, uh, was kind of not the coach on the floor because that's disrespectful to what he is as a player, but like was one of those mentors and veterans that the guys just really uh, gravitated to in the locker room and like it could just be a welcome face and also probably a decent enough to be like your third or fourth big off the bench. But the real prize here is that first round pick from Dallas, which is 10th overall right now. And if you're Cleveland, you could take a player if you want to develop him, if you want to do that course, or you can trade back in the draft or use that lottery pick for a team like San Antonio, uh, who wants to trade back into the lottery, maybe add to Victor Vembignano to maybe go pick from some of the younger players that they have at the wing spot that are more NBA ready and ready to help you contend with Donovan Mitchell on your roster. 
The only thing I'm confused is, I, I, maybe I was, I thought you were saying that Mike's trades were two in the Cavs' favor, and this trade no, no, no. Was, okay, it, it's ahead. more so just when he did include the draft picks, and we didn't know that he didn't think of including draft picks at the time. We're like, okay, well, if you're doing this simple of a trade with Dallas, you need to pry that first round pick right. from them you think, because you, think, you need you need a return to be worth the phone call and the transaction actually happen. Jared Allen is worth the first round pick. For as desperate as Dallas is to make Luca happy, I think they'd be willing to pay that price. I sign that, me that's, up. That's actually that's sign actually it, sign it. And, and by the way, I, I you know, and, and if you do get the first round pick, um, somebody get me a Monty Bates on the line. Can we get him? Uh, uh, some, I gotta say, I say Evan, you, you know more about today. basketball than I do. I just doesn't. Mm-hmm. To me, it doesn't make sense that Dallas. Like, especially if Dallas loses Kyrie, they will. Then they're kind of, I mean, they got Luka at nothing, really. So I can't imagine they would trade their 10th pick when they need to build. I mean, I don't know. I mean, Jared Allen has a, like, I maybe were, I, maybe I'm just blown out of proportion to how bad Jared was in the playoffs. And maybe teams think hot, more highly of him. I I just can't imagine somebody would give up that high a pick for Jared Allen. I, I, I don't know. I hope you're right. I- I think it's it is the Luca factor. I think the Kyrie concern is a real thing too. And if you look at how football operates, if the NBA let their free agency period happen before the draft, I think this would make these decisions a lot cleaner for a lot of these teams. Yeah. I think there's a little bit of fun in the chaos too, and maybe there's a handshake deal or a wink, wink, nudge, nudge behind the scenes in the uh, not so legal uh, tampering period that the NBA goes through all the time. So there 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 is that avenue. You have to wonder what Kyrie's going to do, and I don't think anyone knows what Kyrie's going to do. Not even Kyrie knows what he's going to do at this point. But you might want to take that risk just because Dallas hasn't had a clear answer at center. Like, their solution was JaVale McGee at first, and he wasn't even playing. Um, Christian Wood is a six-man for them, even though he was supposed to be their starting center for a bit. And at least in Jared Allen, and with Luka as the ball hander, like, he's a solid pick-and-roll ball threat. He can give you that defensive presence you need pretty desperately if you're Dallas right now and for Cleveland at least it's more so the question of hey if Evan Mobley's three-point shot doesn't develop and you need some type of spacing you might have to sacrifice it to maximize the potential of what you have between at least Garland Mitchell and Mobley with Allen being that fourth banana in the core four all right let's go to number two Mike the next one's a three-team trade Evan sent wow, me this took me forever one. to make the graphic but Evan I did it because you asked <laughs> and we love you here Let's take it full, oh. Steve. In this trade scenario from Evan, the Cavs get McGee, Jeez. Reggie Bullock, and Keldon Johnson from the Spurs. The Spurs gets Davis Bertans, Akuro Sam Merrill, and a first-round pick. And the Mavs get Jared Allen, Devontae Graham, and a 2025 first-round pick. I don't know half of these people. So well, you should have know JaVale McGee. Yeah, they're not know those so, it's players. okay. So, JaVale McGee, we all know. He is an older defensive-minded big man who is a rim runner. It can be similar to Robin Lopez, but maybe it's more cost-controlled and you can use him as a trade asset. Reggie Bullock is a big, small forward. He's a better shooter than Hardaway Jr. He's more consistent in terms of Dallas' shooters, and I think that's where you can kind of finesse where you're getting this first pick, first round pick from Dallas, and you just parlay that to San Antonio to get Kelvin Johnson, a guy who may not be part of San Antonio's long-term future, but really blossomed as a two-way wing that is really just emphasizes that three-point shooting touch. And he's only 24, 25 years old, I believe. So he fits in nicely with what you're building. And there's still room for him to grow. And then if you're San Antonio, like I said, they're looking to get another lottery pick. And Isaac Okoro is a guy who was starting for a bit, had that knee injury, lost, it looks like, the trust of the coaching staff in the postseason, and has a lot of questions about his shot going forward. You can send him to a situation in San Antonio where they're not expected to be good right away, and they can give him more of that breathing room to develop that he may not have had uh, during his time with Cleveland just because of just how weird his situation has been. And then for Dallas, uh, Devontae Graham is just that extra ball handler. He's not the same type of player as Kyrie, but maybe that's your insurance policy in the event Kyrie walks. You get that rim-running big man, and then just to kind of make the trade a little bit more palatable because you're giving up Reggie Bullock, San Antonio then sends you a future first-round pick in 2025 instead. And then Bertans is 
was a very good player for Washington, but he was a contract year guy, just putting up insane numbers, then signed a pretty lucrative deal, and now he's just a bad contract. So if you're a team like San Antonio, you're willing to eat that cost because you're looking to rebuild and not play for the playoffs right away, and you get a first-round pick in the top 10 out of it. So yeah. it's a little expansive. I appreciate Mikey making that graphic. When I sent it over, I'm like, there's no way he's going to be okay with this because there were several players on that list. But if you're Cleveland, yeah, you're you. not looking to add a rookie yeah. at this point. You're looking to add guys that can – complement what you're building with Donovan Mitchell and these guys yeah. and give you that shooting and just perimeter defense just to kind of maximize and play a little bit more of a modern style of basketball. Mikey, we're running out of time, right? Because we got Chris at 1230. Yeah, we got five minutes. Uh, right, so the let's, one we thing got two on more. that. Yeah, we got two more real quick. Evan, I do like the, uh, the, the premise of that one. I saw Kelly Eco of The Athletic suggested the Mavs, not the Mavs, the Spurs might trade Keldon Johnson to the Rockets for the number four pick in a package like that. So, Johnson, if they could get him, it would be a hell of a fit. He he really good. Like like Kelly Johnson's really good. He could play. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah. play, he really plays good. the three? He's yeah. a hybrid 2-3, yeah. He's a wing. Uh, He's not big, up. though. He's only 6-3. Hmm. Oh, yeah. That's a point guard. Go ahead. All right. The fourth trade. You ready? No, this third is a trade. Third, yeah. tra- third, third trade. Third trade. Excuse me. <laughs> yeah. This is a Cavs Blazers trade. Evan will take it full, and you can explain this one for the people out there. This is a pie in the sky scenario, but you're trying to get that top three pick and then really play with house money at that point. And Portland is a team that is also in a similar vein to Dallas where they don't want to embrace a similar in the fact where they want to appease Damian Lillard and keep Dame there long term and build around him. And it's pretty well known in the ether at this point that Portland's looking to trade this pick and get some type of return. And this can always expand into a bigger trade as well. But you send Allen to Portland along with Isaac Okoro just as a bit of a sweetener. But then you take back use of Nurkic, who is a little bit more oft injured and banged up than Allen, but provides you some of the similar defensive upside. Nasir Little is a guy who hasn't flushed out much since coming out of North Carolina a few years ago, but is a wing player that provides you three-point shooting and defense. He can play small ball four, but mostly is a two-three player. And then, again, you get that third overall pick, and if you're Cleveland, I couldn't think of what would you do with the third overall pick in the draft. But if you're, like, looking at this and say, okay, we'll take the best wing player available, um, and maybe that's Brandon Miller out of Alabama if you're not concerned about his legal issues off the court. But, like, Miller's a guy that – has that prototypical size as a small forward, has a ton of upside, and I think you're more comfortable if you're Cleveland but, saying, okay, we're willing to take a swing on a rookie because we Evan, know he's hold on, hold right on, because we're running out of time and I got to get to this. There is no way on earth the Blazers would trade the third overall <laughs> pick for Jared Allen. That's Come what on I now. see. I was like, if, if they I have to get better, than, they could get better deal than that. If the Blazers the took though, that trade, Dave Lillard go request the trade that it that crazy minutes later. All right, let's, let's see the fourth one though, Mike. Come on. We got one more. This is a Thunder yeah. deal. Evan, I'll let you walk through it again. Sure. It's similar enough where Oklahoma City has Chet Holmgren coming off an injury. He's going to probably play the four for them, even though he's just so massive as a player, just because he's so frail. You call up OKC and say, listen, we could get this 12th overall pick from you, but we'd like to get Kynrick Williams and maybe Jalen Williams as well. The Jalen Williams thing might be a bit of a reach, but you're looking to get Williams, who's a 3-4 player, provides you shooting and perimeter defense, and then you get the 12th overall pick in the draft, and then again, you can parlay that into another trade or you can use that to grab a player that maybe you think can contribute right away all right i just i don't know man i it seems like you're it seems like these these like i just teams don't like giving up lottery picks i don't understand why i don't understand why any team would give up a lottery pick for and players for jared allen that just doesn't make a lot of sense to me i don't well, know in the case of like oklahoma city they have yeah. Oh my gosh! Almost thirty picks over the next four years, so they got right, to kind of spend them at some point. But, well, could, you don't think they could get something better than the twelfth pick than Jared Allen? I'm not sure, just because there is a pretty deep drop off after about the top five, maybe six guys in this draft class, and just Portland is such a weird case where they fell off and they want to keep Dame happy and not trade Dame that they're probably willing to talk shop with a lot of teams just to move that pick to yeah. again they're just such an oddly run organization where they just keep moving in this vicious circle where they're like okay we're just going to do these things to make Dame happy but it's just the same formula just a bunch of different faces yeah all right Evan bottom line here and I think Evan and I ran into the same thing when we look at this Jared Allen means more to the Cavs than he probably means to anyone else and at the end of the day I'd yeah. be surprised at the end of the day if Jared Allen's not in a Cleveland Cavaliers uniform yeah, next season. Sure. 
Well, I think we'd make any of those trades. I mean, uh, the, yeah. I just don't think any of those teams would make trade those him. Hey, so hey, what do I know? Hey if, you, hey, if you somehow subliminally put that in the universe and we get it, shout out to you. Yeah. <laughs> we appreciate it. <laughs> All right, thanks, Evan. <laughs> thanks, guys. Take we'll care. See you later. Evan, we appreciate it, man. Thank you so much. Fake